Turn with me, if you will, to John's letter, 1 John. It's all about confidence. I, I don't know how many times I read this letter this week. It's five chapters. I read it over and over and over again. The Bible, when it talks about knowledge and confidence, being able to stand... It's not talking about your self-assurance. It's not talking about your ability or your talents. What the Bible is talking about in confidence is what we possess, what we have in Christ Jesus. You don't get this without Jesus. So when we leave this place today... Jamie prayed about it, we've sung about it, talked about it in the preparation time. We go into an uncertain world uh, that's filled with problems and stress and sickness and all kinds of issues that weigh upon our confidence. But John wants us to be of good cheer. We have overcome. Uh, The Lord has given to us purpose and strength by which we have confidence. Uh, The whole book of 1 John or the whole letter of 1 John is summarized in uh, chapter 5 verse 13. Turn there with me. Listen to what he says. Chapter 5, verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know. Do you know? That you may know that you have eternal life. I mean, uh, uh, eternal life is forever. Uh, it, it not only includes uh, today and tomorrow, uh, but it includes heaven, God's eternity. And the Lord wants us to know through this reading, this, this time together this morning, that we can have confidence. That we can know when the, when the Bible uses that word know... It's talking about certainty, secured certainty. You can know that you know that you know. Look at uh, chapter 2. Look at verse 3 of chapter 2 in 1 John. Look what he says here. By this we know that we have come to know. (laughs) How about that? In other words, you can double know. You can triple know that you are in Him. That you are saved. Heard about this sage grandpa that was talking to his grandson. And he said to his, uh, he said, uh, to his um, grandson, Always remember, son, fools are certain, but wise men hesitate. And the grandson said, are you sure about that, grandpa? And then the old man put his scarred, gnarled hand upon the lad's shoulder and patted his shoulder and said, absolutely sure. You see, many of the certainties of this life leave scars. Right? Some of you are wearing them this morning. Be careful in what you trust, in what you place your certainty. It may bite you, And leave you scarred. 
But John wants us to know that the secured certainty of God is always trustworthy, always available. We can know that we know. We can double know. We can triple know in Christ. And the first point I want to make is there in chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. Look what he says. By this we know that we have come to know Him if we keep His commandments. The one who says, I have come to know Him and does not keep His commandments is a liar. You can't get more plain than that is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. I want to tell you, the Christian life is not just a fire insurance policy. It is a daily walk of obedience. You can't get away from it. Okay? We are saved in order to be obedient unto Jesus Christ day after day after day. When we fail in obedience, when we fail to make Jesus Lord, uh, it, affects our, it affects our confidence in the Lord. Uh, Jesus talked about this when he, when he told us the parable of the um, man who built his house on the rock and the man who built his house on the sand. Introducing that parable, listen what he said in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? It was a problem in Jesus' day. It's a problem now. Some of us here this morning are having a problem calling Jesus Lord, Lord. Why? Because we have problems obeying what He says and following Him in our daily walk. Now when you choose to obey, the Bible says you're like that guy who dug deep. I like that part. I like that part of the parable. It said this guy dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. In other words, he dug and he kept on digging till he got to the rock. How serious are you about the Word of God? Some of you only spend time in God's Word on Sunday morning. You don't dig deep looking for the rock. I was so proud this week of our New college and career class. You know what happened? Let me tell you what happened. Trent Campbell and Nicole created a website. Not a website. They created a Facebook page. Is that right? A Facebook page. And what Trent does, and Nicole uh, accomplished through that, is they write questions out of the Sunday school lesson that the students in that class can chew on all week long. And then you know what happens there? All of the students in that class have friends. Imagine that. They have friends on on Facebook. I started to say Facebook. Facebook. (laughs) They have friends on Facebook and that Sunday school lesson goes out to all of their friends. Who knows how far it goes? And then you know what else happened this week? The students in that class responded back to Trent and Nicole with what the Lord was saying to them as a result of what they were reading and studying in the Word of God. And it was happening on Facebook. What if all of us in this room did that? 
and began to, began to ponder with our friends and our, our acquaintances and all of those people that we send our family pictures. It's good to send family pictures. It's good to talk about what restaurants you're eating in and how the food is delicious. It's good to talk about the traffic and avoid this and that and other things. You can talk about stuff on Facebook all day long. But why not? Why not use it to share the Word of God? Amen. Listen to what he says here. Listen to what he says. He says, whoever keeps his Word... In Him, the love of God has truly been perfected. You know what that means? It means that when you keep the Word of God, you cross the finish line. How about that? Being obedient unto the Lord accomplishes everything that God wants in your heart. You not only dig deep, you touch the rock, but you accomplish for God what will bring Him glory. What makes him praiseworthy? You cannot be confident in your faith. Mark this down. You cannot be confident in your faith and not serious about the Word of God. It's impossible. Okay? Now number two. Here's the second point I want to make. We know that our love for one another We are confident when we obey the Word of God, when we obey the words of Jesus, and then we build confidence when we know that our our love proceeds to loving others. This is what he says over in 1 John 3, 10 through 14. Turn there with me, if you will. 10 through 14. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. Isn't that amazing? Here the righteousness of God is married to what happens in this church when everybody gets out in the aisle and loves on one another. Okay? The righteousness. How can you be righteous before God and not love God's people? You see, the righteousness of God just is all over this place. It comes in with us. It goes into the Sunday school class with us. It's going to happen tonight around a chili bowl. The righteousness of God happens when the people of God love one another. That's what he's talking about here. Look what he says. For this is the message. Did I finish that verse? I don't think I did. Let me read it again. Verse 10. By this the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the evil one and slew his brother. And for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. I want to tell you on the campaign trail, people are beating up on each other like crazy. Are you watching it? Tell me those people love one another. They're not even friends. Tearing one another apart the way they do. We ought not do that at church. We love one another in the house of God because we are living the righteousness of our Savior Day by day. Look what else he says here. Do not be surprised, brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. He who does not love abides in death. You can't backbite. You can't 
You can't beat up on people and at the same time say that you love God and you're living righteously before Him. The two are interconnected. You know what happens when you try to put one foot in the world and one foot in the church? You know what the Bible calls that? Double-minded. James 1.8. Double-minded. And then Paul says this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. He says, Children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of man, by craftiness in deceitful scheming. We know better how to cut and carve than we do, than we know how to fellowship in the love of Christ. In our world, I want to tell you there has to be some place, somewhere that's different. Did you know that? Listen, what he look over here at, at chapter 2, verses 13, 15 and following. Listen, do not love the world nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world is passing away and also its lusts, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. You want to be confident in the Lord? Get in church! where people love one another. It's different here. It's different in this place because the righteousness of God leads us to love one another. You like that? Is that okay? I heard about this, um, I heard about this father and daughter who buried their mother. And after the funeral, they went home not knowing what to do. I mean, there was a big hole in their their lives where their mother once was. And they went through their routines after getting home and they ate together and watched a little TV, but It wasn't the same. And so the dad at the regular time got his daughter, little 10-year-old daughter, ready for bed, put her in the bed and went to his own bedroom, got himself ready and laid down, but sleep would not come. And in a moment, he heard his daughter from across the hall. And she said, Daddy, Daddy, do you love me through the dark? The daddy responded, Honey, you know I love you. I love you all the time. I love you through anything. That seemed to satisfy her. And as he turned... He looked up into the ceiling of his house and he cried out. He said, Daddy, Daddy, do you love me through the dark? And he received the assurance of the Holy Spirit that his heavenly Father in heaven not only hears his plea, but loves him through anything. Do you know that this morning? Y'all, that's one reason why we need each other so desperately. We need to come together as much as we can to say, I love you through anything, through the dark, through the pain, through the sickness and the sorrow. The righteousness of God 
flows through me and comes out into love that is for you, the people of God. That builds confidence. I want to tell you, when you know that you're loved by God and you're loved by His people, you are ready for this world and all that it has to throw at you. One more. Is that pretty good so far? Here we go. One more. You're going to like this one. We know that, that we know that we know we have confidence because of our love for God's Word and our obedience unto the Lord. We know that we know because God's righteousness causes us to love one another. And then we know that we know because we test the spirits. Look what it says in 1 John 4, 1 and 2. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. I hate to buy cars. I hate it. I'm an easy touch. I'll admit it. I just trust people. I believe people. And uh, my, my sons get all over me. They say, you didn't haggle over that? You know, the Bible says test the spirit. Right? Don't be an easy touch. Uh, don't, don't be... Uh, susceptible to every spiritual shyster that's out there. Try to say that three times fast. A.T. Robertson said this. He said, don't be like some believers who fall easy victim to the latest fads in spiritualistic humbuggery. And believe you me, it's out there. Be careful. Jesus, uh, Paul said over in 1 Corinthians 10, 18, he says, For it is not he who commends himself that is approved, but he whom the Lord commends. That word for approved there means to pass the test. It's like, uh, like the fire or, or the acid test that proves the metal. Take time to test the spirits, and know what is of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. My son Matthew, my oldest son, serves as associate pastor up at North Lake Baptist Church up toward Dahlonega. And last year they did his ordination council over at First Baptist Church of Winder. And uh, all of these ordained men came into the council. You know what the orda- uh, the orna- an ordination council is? It is a testing time where you talk to a person who has been called into ministry or called into the deaconship and you question them about their faith. You want to make sure that God has called them and that they are not a, uh, what you might call a novice in their faith. And so you ask them these questions. And they ask my, my son all kinds of questions. They ask him about, the, the first question they ask him, get this, was about stewardship. They wanted to know if he was a tither. They didn't care about whether he could preach or not. They wanted to know about how much he gave to the church. Of course, he is a tither. They talked to him about, about um, his relationship to his pastor. Was he a supporter of his pastor? They talked to him, they asked him questions about his family. You know, if he was 
faithful to his wife and what it meant to be a children, a, a, a daddy of four kids and that kind of thing. They talked to him about all of those things. And it, we had been there about an hour and a half. And it got toward the end and it dawned on me, no one has asked Matthew about Jesus. Not a soul. And I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I tried to behave myself. And they were getting ready to have the benediction prayer. And I said, wait a minute. I want to hear what my son says about his belief in Jesus. I want to tell you, if you don't get that right, none of it's right. Right? It's talking about confessing Jesus Christ not only as Savior and Redeemer, but confessing Jesus Christ as the one who came from God in the flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Look at chapter 4. Look at chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. It says, By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. That's the reason your testimony about Jesus is so vital. It's not what the philosophers say about Jesus. It's not just what the, what the Bible says about Jesus, but it's what Jesus has, hap- has done in your own life. And how it's made a difference in you. Your testimony. That's the way the the Spirit reveals Himself to others. C.S. Lewis said, The Son of God became man so that men could become the sons of God. We're the best message there is about the life and the death of Jesus. You know what? If you can come up here in the altar this morning and you can say, I believe that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe that Jesus lived a sinless life. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and shed His blood for my sin. And you say, I believe that God rose rose Him, resurrected Him from the dead on the third day. I believe that Jesus Christ ascended into heaven and, and lives to make intercession for us. And I believe that Jesus, according to God's timetable, is coming again in glory to redeem His children. If you can say that, you know what? It's not you. It's not you saying it. You know who's saying that? It is the Holy Spirit giving you unction to say what you believe about Jesus. And if you can say that, if you can say that, then the confidence of Christ, the confidence of your faith grows and multiplies and extends to other people. I mean, people know who's phony and who's not. I mean, when you speak in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit, it transmits, it translates unto them as the genuine Word of God flowing through you in the name of Jesus. There were two guys that went to a fast food restaurant. They showed up at the same time, came through separate doors, and showed up at the same time, didn't know each other, but they wound up at the counter next door to each other, right next to each other. They ordered their food, and the place was crowded, and so they all had to wait. They both had to wait with their tray in hand, kind of like going to Chick-fil-A, had to wait with their tray in hand for an empty place. And when one empty place opened up, they both went for it. And so rather than one wait, they both just sat down together. And these two strangers, who didn't know each other, had lunch together. And and the funny thing about it was, was both of them were believers in Jesus. They both knew the Lord. And so one of them wanted to pray and give God thanks for the meal, and the other one wanted to do the same, but they didn't do it because they were afraid that they would offend the other person. Okay? 
Kind of a standoff. All right? And so they went back and forth. You know what they would do? They would look down at their food, and then they'd look up at each other. And they'd look down at their food, and they'd look up at each other. And they looked down at their food. <laughs> they did that three or four times. And then finally, one of them just bowed his head and started praying. And when he bowed his head and started praying, the other guy bowed his head and started praying. And then when they both raised their head up, one says to the other, he said, I'm so glad you bowed your head and you prayed. I was afraid of you. And the other one said, I was afraid of you too. Are you standoffish when it comes to living for Jesus? Do you like confidence and boldness to talk to people about the Lord? I mean, you know that you're saved. You could probably tell me when it happened. And yet we find ourselves cowed down and timid and shy. Rather than offend someone, we just lock it down, and we say nothing. When the Bible tells us you can know that you know that you know, and every time you tell somebody that you know, it convinces you even more firmly that you know. How about that? So get out and tell the people. Talk to folks about Jesus and who He is and what He's done for you. Tell them that He lives and He makes intercession for us at the right hand of the Father. Tell them that He's coming again in glory and in power. Tell them that you know. How's the Lord spoken to you this morning? Do you need to come and receive Christ as your Savior? Do you need to settle that in your heart? Ask Him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you and settle the question that you might have eternal life forever and ever. Do you need to join this church? Do you need to make it your home place? Look, one thing I know about Grace Baptist Church is people love one another. There's no backbiting here. All right? There's no... uh, Uh, cutting off and cutting down and running down and beating up. These people love one another in this place. You need a church where the love of Christ is manifested in the love of God through His people. Join this church. It may be that you need to come and confess to the Lord that you've not been obedient like you need to be, like He wants you to be, and you've just kind of laid the Bible aside. You've not been diligent in your study of God's Word. Do you need to just come and make things new and fresh with the Lord this morning? Whatever He leads you to do, be obedient to the leading of His Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Our Father, we bow before You today and we acknowledge that we're sinners. We are sinners. We've failed and we've messed up and we've Lord disappointed you our Savior and our Lord this week even Uh, we've come to church today not not right with you and Father we confess that before you we ask you God to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and then Lord to reveal to us show us what you would have us to do If it's a step of faith to receive Christ as Savior, give unction for that. Our Father, if it's to make things right, having, Lord, strayed and and gone afar, Lord, if we need to come home, Lord, draw us back unto Yourself. Then, Heavenly Father, for those who need a, a church family to gather around them and walk with them and support them and pray for them and lift them up, God, whatever it is, Oh God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would not let us loose. Lord, would trouble us in our spirit until we make these things right with you. This is the moment of decision. We're not guaranteed another moment. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to move in the lives of your people this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's trust the Lord to do for us what what He wants to do.